Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. If you guys don't know, the summer event for War Thunder is coming up very soon, and as such, we are now rife with speculation as to what will and will not be coming as rewards for that event. Now, in the past, there used to be six event vehicles that were given. More recently, it has been four, with pretty much only higher tier vehicles being given on offer, although typically they do have a low BR tank or something of that nature, but nothing else. So, typically four. So, you have have a high BR aircraft tank and ship and then again a low BR tank typically. Now that being said this video will be kind of a wish list what I want to see some interesting vehicles coming to War Thunder for the new event because typically with these events it is the perfect time to bring something into the game that was like a one-off or very limited production that really should be in game and that's kind of what this entire list is and I've got quite a few aircraft a few tanks and even some ships. Now that being said let's start off with the aircraft and the first one is probably a very very long shot because it's never going to come to war thunder but i may as well include it because it is interesting and i have a history video on it that is actually my most viewed video of all time so that being said the yb40 that's right the gunship version of the b17 this thing was basically created because at the time in early 1943 late 1942 the u.s didn't really have great escort fighters or escort fighters really that were long range enough to be able to fly alongside the B-17s for the entire mission. And so they thought, why not just make some B-17s specialized and give them a whole bunch of extra firepower? So basically they made it so that these could not carry bombs, but instead would be loaded up with sometimes over a dozen extra machine guns, sometimes cannons. It was crazy. And even some additional turrets. So, you know, where there were single mount 50 cal Brownings, now there are are double mounts where there were no turrets now there's an additional dorsal turret and even some of these again were fitted out with different armaments and a lot of the time it was actually up to the discretion of the ground crew so whatever sort of armament that they had they would kind of equip them it was a really interesting thing because not all yb40s were the same so in theory you could fly this thing alongside your b17 buddies and cover them and make kind of a battle group which would be really really cool or like a bomber box and you'd be able to defend really well at least in theory against enemy fighters now in real life it wasn't all that successful the main reason being is because this actually weighed around 4,000 pounds more than the fully loaded b-17s at that time so somehow even without bombs because this had so much extra ammo and also additional turrets and guns and cannons and all that it weighed two tons more and because of that it also had greater aerodynamic drag and and it actually took around 25 minutes, around two times the length to get up to 20,000 feet as it did for the B-17. So basically, while the B-17s were trying to get up to altitude, this would either have to already be up there because it would have to start so much sooner, or they would have to wait for the YB-40. So it was not a very effective escort and would oftentimes be left behind or just would force the entire bomber box to slow down, whatever the case may be. Anyways, I do have a history on it. I did it a while ago. Forget the exact specifics, but this was used several times in combat over a period of about two months. It was a very interesting plane. So I would really like to see that just kind of like again on my wish list next up we have the ryan fr fireball which also coincidentally is a vehicle that i have a history on if you'd like i'm going to try to link all the histories i mentioned in the comments below and also the description so definitely check them out if you guys want to know more about that vehicle in particular anyways the ryan fr fireball is the first vehicle in u.s navy history to have been jet powered although it was mixed propulsion meaning that it actually had a right cyclone piston engine up front and of course a J31 centrifugal turbojet in the back. So it had both sources powering this thing forward, which if I'm not mistaken, this would be the first mixed propulsion aircraft in War Thunder's history. I'm actually really surprised that they have not released this yet. So it would be a really, really good time to do it. I could see this thing being give or take between six and seven BR, depending on kind of what they do. If they bring the Dark Shark into the game, which is basically the fireball, but instead of the right cyclone piston engine, it had a turboprop in front and it went about 100 miles per hour faster. So if that came into game, I could see that being a higher 
player BR, but either way, they both had like 450 cals. It wasn't incredibly well armed, but a very cool vehicle nonetheless, and again, I do have a history video on that. Next up, for another wish list thing, I have the ME262 HG1, and this is one that I really don't see ever coming to War Thunder. Coincidentally, I also have a history video on this. Believe it or not, I do have a lot of history videos online, so check them out. But the ME262 HG1 is pretty much just like a streamlined version of the ME262. It had somewhat better lines. The ME262 in real life had a very rough fuselage. So kind of imagine this like the fuselage repair modification. That's kind of like what this was, right? Plus a few additional things here and there, but nothing all too crazy. Something that would probably give it better aerodynamics. I think it might be able to go slightly faster because the drag was a little bit better. Maybe turn a little bit better, but it wouldn't really be all too much. It'd probably be 7.0, 7.3 like your typical ME262 but it'd be a really cool modification because it actually flew. Now, we could also do the HG2, which I really don't think will ever come to War Thunder. Fun fact, the HG1 and HG2 were actually on a roadmap for War Thunder like a decade ago for vehicles to actually come to the game, and of course, they haven't done it yet. But the HG2 was basically a version of the ME262 that had further swept back wings. It had, I believe, the engines mounted slightly closer to the fuselage, if I'm not mistaken, and some of them actually actually had the V-tail modification, at least the designs that they had. So it would have had a butterfly tail, which would be extremely interesting. And I personally would love to see that come to War Thunder, but there's doubts if that even flew. But there are reports that the HG-2 was destroyed on a runway near the end of the war. So I'm not entirely sure, but for sure the HG-1 did exist. There's even a picture of it. Now, that being said, for the next one, we have the HE-280. And coincidentally, I did a history on this one as well. So the HE280 is basically the competitor to the ME262. This vehicle was one that was designed by Heinkel and would have been basically competing for production alongside the ME262. And it actually flew sooner and was ready for the most part sooner than the ME262. And by all accounts had better agility, maneuverability, all of that. But it would have been somewhat more limited. It would have been a better fighter. However, the ME262 was like a better overall plane and likely had a little bit better versatility overall over the HE-280. So it was a very functional aircraft and the stats, the specs are very well known. This is another one that I'm actually really surprised has not come to War Thunder as of yet, but it definitely should because something like a dozen of them were made. So it was definitely a very far in production vehicle by the time that it was actually canceled. And even after it was canceled, Heinko continued developing it in hopes that they could produce it further. And I am almost Almost sure that if the Germans had actually produced this, they would have been able to put this into combat operational use earlier than the ME262 because it seemed like the HE280 was a more advanced or at least further along design than again the 262. Now, my final two suggestions that I could see, and by the way, I'm thinking the HE280 would probably be somewhere around 6, 6.3 BR, so not quite as low as the P59, but give or take maybe around there, possibly even 6.7, maybe I'm just underestimating it a little bit. Now, that being said, and I'll try to get through the rest of the vehicles on this list kind of quick, the final few vehicles that I have for aircraft are the YF-93 and the XF-90. So these vehicles were more or less developed around the same time. They were considered to be penetration fighters, so basically like long-range escort fighters in a way, and they were essentially designed to attack enemy interceptors. So these vehicles were to be fast, long-range. They didn't necessarily have to have the most maneuverability because typically interceptors didn't really have great maneuverability ability themselves, but just enough to be able to defeat them, and of course, enough armament to take them down, and that's again what the YF-93 was. Now, the YF-93 was actually a development of the F-86 Sabre, so it's actually a pretty similar looking vehicle, not entirely the same, but pretty close, and it would have gone over 700 miles per hour. It would have been like 21,000 pounds for gross weight. It had a really nice J-48 afterburning engine with around 30 39 kilonewtons of afterburning thrust, or around 8,750 pounds feet of thrust, which was fantastic. It had six 20 millimeter M24 cannons. This thing would have been nasty. And the great thing is, two of these were made and they were flown for around six years. So we have a good amount of data on it. And I, this is another one that I just 
hate that Gaijin is kind of forgetting about the early Cold War vehicles because there are so many to take from because especially in the late 40s, early 50s, there are so many vehicles that both the East and West designed and flew and just even tanks as well that can and should be in War Thunder. And I'm really, really shocked. Like the Mixmaster, the Jetmaster, the Scorpion, you know, and so far as bombers are concerned, there are just a ton. Now, finally, again, the XF 50 this thing looks like a spaceship you know it was amazingly good looking there were two of these made and it could go around 665 miles per hour pretty much designed for the same exact purpose of the yf-93 but of course it was done a little bit differently this was developed by skunk works basically, or at least the early iteration of Skunk Works. It would have had two engines, not capable of afterburner, but still producing around 4,100 pounds feet of thrust each, so still a lot. This would have weighed a bit more than the YF-93 and would also be able to go, I think I, I may have mentioned this, 665 miles per hour, but would have had up to six 20 millimeter cannons as well. So a very similar sort of design. This would probably be a little bit lower BR, and also they actually picked the YF-93 to be produced but then they kind of took it out of service or they stopped production before it even started, whereas the XF-90 never even saw that, at least insofar as the consideration for production is concerned. Now, that being said, let's get into the tanks. And again, like I said before, they typically have a low BR tank and high BR tank. So for my wish list, I'm going to say the EE-T1 Osorio. Now, many of you guys might have seen Cone of Arc's video, but the Osorio was basically a main battle tank developed in Brazil. And and it was actually totally funded by a company named Engesa. And it was a privately funded venture, and it was basically meant to be sold to third world countries and also countries in the Middle East as a cheap alternative to the more expensive main battle tanks in the world. And this thing actually beat, at least according to Cone of Arc. So this was designed in the 80s, and a few prototypes were designed and produced in the 80s. This was, according to Cone of Arc, and I believe it 100%, it beat the M1 Abrams in several competitions, but of course, the U.S. had its political pressure and sold its Abrams to the Middle East, whereas the Osorio was left behind. Now, this was around a 41 to 43 ton vehicle, depending on the modification that you had, and it could have either a 105 or 120 millimeter cannon, which would be fantastic. It also had 1,100 horsepower, which would provide it with around 26 horsepower per ton. This would be kind of like a super, super AMX-30. So this would be a really, really cool vehicle to come to War Thunder. It had composite armor, it had ceramics, all these things. I would love to see this in War Thunder. And this is another one that I'm genuinely kind of surprised it's not in game yet because War Thunder has such a huge Brazilian player base. I mean, the amount of people with the Brazilian emblems on their vehicles, they would go crazy for this. And I'm telling you, I would too. Next up for my wish list, we have the Jaguar. And this was a prototype vehicle vehicle that was based on the Chinese Type 59, which itself was based on the T-55 from Russia. And believe it or not, there was a time when the US and China collaborated in a joint effort to make a vehicle, a battle tank. And uh, well, let's just say long story short, those relations soured over time. But before the US backed out of it, there were plans to replace the entire Chinese fleet or at least a large portion of it. Well, at least the Type 59s with the Jaguar. And basically what this would have been, it would have been an improvement to the Type 59 engine, armor, turret, armaments, optics, electronics, fire control, and suspension, basically making this a totally better vehicle. It would have probably had composites, it would have had a better cannon, would have had so much. But of course, it never at least was fully produced. Now, it was scrapped towards the end of the uh, Tiananmen Square protest, after that at least, in uh, 89. And so it didn't really go anywhere with China. However, there was a prototype that was created after, you know, the, the US pulled out of it. It was, of course, created by the Americans. And unfortunately, no one ever purchased it because, of course, with the the end of the cold war there were so many vehicles out in the market but this would be a really really cool tank to see in game another huge player base the chinese player base would really see such a great cool vehicle come to war thunder or you could also potentially because this was finished by the americans put this in the american ground forces tech tree as a type 59 and it would be historically accurate but it'd be of course an american modified one i think it'd be really really cool but uh you know of course we'll have to wait and see if that ever happens 
happens. And then finally, when it comes to tanks, the lower BR vehicle that I would really like to come to War Thunder is the Nahuel DL-43. Now this is a medium tank that was designed and developed in Argentina during World War II. So again, another player base that would get a vehicle in game. And basically it was kind of designed to be like an Argentinian M4 Sherman. So this vehicle was of course Argentinian. I mean, they didn't really have the industry that the Americans had, but this was actually a very cool effort in my opinion because it weighed 35 tons, had a 500 horsepower engine, so it would have actually been pretty decent and give or take around the same power to weight ratio as a Sherman and had up to 80 millimeter thick armor and also was very, very sloped. Now, the only problem in my opinion with this is that it would have had a 75 millimeter cannon that would have been the Krupp model 1909 field gun. So it probably wouldn't be all that good. And I'm not entirely sure how this thing would be balanced. I could see it being around a 3.0, maybe a 2.7 BR vehicle, depending on what sort of ammunition and also armor pen that this thing could have but overall it has pretty decent armor itself and again had a similar enough look to the sherman so it'd be a really really cool tank that i would love to see to come to game especially being that it would be an argentinian tank even though we already have argentinian tanks in war thunder with the tam tam 2 ip things like that this would be a really really unique vehicle and over a dozen of these were actually made so there is knowledge there there are specs on these vehicles that could definitely make it into war thunder and now we have have the last of the vehicles of course ships typically they've only given higher br ships recently so that's what i'll be going with and so the first one is kind of a joke but also kind of not because in theory it could be put into war thunder the uss prince eugen that's right the uss prince eugen did exist because it was given as a war prize at the end of world war ii to the u.s and was actually in u.s camouflage and operation for i think about a year after the war before it was nuked in nuclear testing around Bikini Atoll, if I'm not mistaken. So this would be a really, really interesting vehicle. If not, they could give this as a skin to the German naval fleet, which I would love to see. That would be a really, really cool skin, and whoever makes that skin would probably make a decent enough amount of money from the partnership uh, monetization sharing program that Gaijin has. But regardless, off of that, the real one that I'm kind of thinking about is the French cruiser Algerie. Pretty much, this is an evolution of the Colbert, which is currently in game i believe that's like a 5.3 br vehicle anyways it's got the same overall main armament so eight 203 millimeter cannons however it has a much improved secondary armament with 12 100 millimeter secondary cannons instead of the 890 millimeter secondaries that are currently on the colbert even better if we add its refitted version the algerie would have around two times the anti-air capabilities that it did prior to the refit which would already be pretty damn good so we'd be looking at eight 37 millimeter cannons with four dual mounts of 37 millimeter cannons we'd see a whole bunch of just let's say a whole bunch of uh guns and cannons and all that all around it would be a formidable ship to say the least so i would love to see it plus it would spur interest in the french naval tree which would be really really cool and this if i'm not mistaken was the only one of its class that was ever built so it would also be a very unique vehicle so that being said let me know what you guys think in the comments below this video lasted probably around eight to ten minutes longer than i anticipated but of course there were a lot of vehicles and a lot to go over so let me know what your wish list is i want to read it in the comments below i'd be interested to see if you guys have some of the same ideas that i do or if you have something totally different either way thanks again i'll see you all on the other side take care everyone